Your face is junk. Anthony here for DNews, and it turns out that the reason that we humans have such individual faces might be traced to stuff inside of us that we thought was useless. So about 98% of your DNA is made up of what used to be called junk DNA. You know that your DNA is your physical blueprint. Everything about the way you look and function is at least partially tied into some part of it. So brown eyes, bad knees, tiny, almost carny-like hands. But after we mapped the genome and started tracing everything back, it looked like only 2% of it had a function that we could see. The rest of it didn't seem to be doing anything. But over the last few years, we've begun to back away from the term junk. We call it non-coding DNA now, and not just to avoid hurting its feelings. It turns out that most of this seemingly useless DNA has a very large effect on us. The DNA that seems to be giving us all our dashing good looks are called enhancers. They don't do anything on their own, but they control how much other genes express themselves. Researchers at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab grabbed some mice, like researchers tend to do, and they removed three suspected enhancers from their non-coding DNA and then compared their faces with normal mice using a 3D scanner. The mice with the changed DNA showed substantial changes to things like face length and the width of features like the base of their skulls or their palates. And since humans have a lot of the same sequences in our non-coding DNA, there's reason to believe that our faces are junk too. Junk faces. All of us. Other bits of our non-coding DNA are kind of fascinating as well. For instance, some of it is made up of leftovers of old endogenous retroviruses. These are viruses that thousands or millions of years ago infected our evolutionary ancestors and then got passed on to their offspring. And we used to think that it just hung out there, just taking up space. But some of it was important for making us immune to those viruses. Others seem to have huge roles in our evolution. A study of sheep a few years ago seemed to point to retroviral DNA in early mammals that actually jumped started the production of placenta during pregnancy, which led to fewer miscarriages and healthier babies and allowed mammals to spread through the earth today. So what do we get out of knowing about this face-shaping, non-coding DNA? The responsible, qualified adults in the room say that it's for pinning down things like the causes of cleft lip and palate and helping to eliminate them. The part of my brain that reads too much speculative sci-fi goes, oh my god, we'll be able to control what our children's faces look like and only the rich and powerful will be beautiful. I think I might need to nap more because that part of my brain's been screaming a lot lately. You know, I wonder if those mice felt bad after their faces changed. It could happen. Animals have very fragile egos, you know. We just made a whole new channel devoted to it. It's called Animals with Low Self-Esteem, and I am in it this week as a particularly bummed out goose. Go check it out and let me know what you think of it, and remember to subscribe here for more D-News.